Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I am very excited because today I am in the kitchen and I am going to be trying to make two recipes that were partially created by machine learning. Specifically, I'll be making what the creators of these recipes call the cakey, which is 50% cake and 50% cookie. In the photos, it looks more like a cake. And the second recipe I'll be trying to make is the breaky or breakies. And these are 50% bread and 50% cookie. In the photos, it looks more like a cookie or a very large, very tall cookie. I first want to go over some background and the machine learning techniques that they used to develop these recipes. If you're only interested in the recipes, then I'll leave a timestamp here and below and you can jump ahead. And if you're only interested in seeing what the final result looks like, then I'll leave another timestamp here and below and you can jump ahead even further. This is a good day, yes, any. Let's first talk about machine learning. If you don't know what machine learning is, in the most basic way that I can think to describe it, it's where we want to teach a computer or a machine to predict something or generate some output or result given some input data. That might make a little bit more sense when I talk about how machine learning was used to create these recipes. By the way, I'll link to Google's original blog post in the description box below so you can go read about it in more depth if you'd like. But this all got started when a developer at Google named Sarah Robinson wanted to make a machine learning model that could analyze baking recipes and that could also generate new recipes. Her first model could take a list of ingredients and could give predictions for what type of recipe it is based solely on looking at the list of ingredients. The first recipe she developed was called the cakey, which as I mentioned before is 50% cake and 50% cookie. Then months later she teamed up with a fellow employee and they took her concept to the next level. They wanted to make a better model with more data and they also wanted it to be explainable. They wanted it to actually give them insight into what actually makes cakes cakes, cookies cookies, and breads breads. Through this effort, they came up with the breaky recipe, which as I mentioned is 50% bread and 50% cookie. Here's how they built their model. They use something called auto ML tables, which is a tool that lets you build a machine learning model on tabular data or data that's organized in a table. They collected 600 recipes of cookies, cakes, and breads, and they chose 16 core ingredients to characterize each recipe. Yeast, flour, sugar, egg, fat, milk, baking soda, baking powder, apple cider vinegar, buttermilk, banana, pumpkin puree, avocado, water, butter, and salt. Their reasoning for choosing these 16 ingredients, they admit, was somewhat arbitrary, but they said they chose the 16 ingredients that they felt would affect the texture and consistency of a recipe. So they thought that if you knew the quantities of these 16 ingredients in the recipe, then you'd be able to distinguish between cookie, cake, and bread recipes. They also put sweet breads like banana bread in the cake category. And this makes sense to me because I can imagine it'd be difficult for a person, let alone a simple machine learning model, to distinguish between something like a banana cake and a banana bread. They also use something called data augmentation to make their database larger. So they would randomly double or triple the recipes in their database and add those as additional recipes to their database. Because they say if you double or triple a cookie, cake, or bread recipe, you'll still get a cookie, cake, or bread, respectively. I think America's Test Kitchen could probably find cases to dispute this claim, but I think for their purposes, this is a fair assumption. To train their model, they used GCP, and the AutoML tools on GCP lets you just upload your table and tell it which column is your target or what column tells you what recipe it is, cake, cookie, or bread. And you can train your model with a click of a button. So during training, it will look at the feature columns, or in this application, it would be the amounts of each ingredient that goes into a recipe, and it will learn patterns to predict the target column, or in this case, the category of the recipe. It also let them do some analysis on their model, so they could see how much different ingredients correlated with the recipe category, and they could also see how important different ingredients were to their model. And they found, I suppose unsurprisingly, that butter, sugar, egg, and yeast are important predictors of the recipe type. In their blog post, they talk about a few other patterns that they noticed. So if you're interested, definitely go check that out. But by analyzing the scores for the importance of different ingredients, they were able to figure out what makes the model classify a recipe as a cookie, a cake, or a bread recipe. So they were then able to come up with a recipe that the model thought was 50% cookie and 50% bread. And that's what they call the breaky. The last thing I'll say before we make these recipes is that the model doesn't tell you how to make the recipes. It only tells you the ingredients. So they had to experiment a little bit to figure out how to put the ingredients together. But let's give these recipes a try. 
Both recipes required a preheated oven at 350 degrees, so I prepared that first. Then I started on the cakey recipe. I greased a loaf pan. Sarah Robinson used a six inch cake pan, but she said a loaf pan should work too. Then in a stand mixer, I creamed half a cup plus three quarters of a tablespoon of room temperature butter until it was smooth. And then I added a quarter cup each of brown sugar and granulated sugar and let that go until everything was well combined. Scraping down the sides of the bowl to make sure. And then I added a splash of vanilla. The recipe only called for an eighth of a teaspoon, which is a very tiny amount. One egg a quarter cup of olive oil, a very interesting ingredient in any type of cookie recipe, but maybe not so weird for a cake. Then I mix that up until everything was well incorporated. Added my dry ingredients which were a cup of flour, one teaspoon baking powder, and a quarter teaspoon salt. I mixed that on low until it was all combined. Then I added chocolate chips, folded them in, and then I dumped the batter into my prepared loaf pan. Smoothed it all out. And into the oven it went for 30 minutes. The recipe said 25, but mine was still a bit gooey in the middle at 25 minutes. While that baked, I got started on my breakies. This recipe started by adding two teaspoons of active dry yeast to warm milk. While it sat there, I got my dry ingredients together, which were two cups of flour, one teaspoon baking soda, half teaspoon salt, and a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. They didn't say how long the yeast needed to sit in the milk, but it was probably sitting there for no more than a few minutes. Then I added that milk and yeast mixture straight into the dry ingredients, mixed it up, and it was still quite dry at this point. Then I added a lightly beaten egg and again stirred it up. They said it was okay for it to look like there was too much flour and it certainly did look like that. It was pretty pebbly in texture. I was actually quite skeptical at this point. Anyway, I let that sit to the side while I got the cookie part together, which started again with creaming butter, one and a quarter sticks, hopefully her sticks and my sticks are the same quantities plus half a cup of white sugar and a quarter cup of brown sugar. Once that was smooth, I added the flour mixture one cup at a time to the butter and sugar, mixing on low in between each addition.
It did look like cookie dough at this point. And then I added the chocolate chips again, folding them in. And then to be precise here, I weighed out exactly 50 grams of dough per ball, which is what they specify in the recipe. It was a bit difficult to get the full 16 breakies out of the recipe, but I was able to manage. I just baked off eight at a time, and each batch took about 13 minutes. Okay, the cakey and the breakies are out of the oven, they've cooled, and I'm ready to try them. First, let's take a look at this cakey. This is what it looks like. It looks pretty good. It does look like a cookie in the form of cake. It looks like a very dense cake. Wow, that's really good. It does have the texture of a cake, but the flavor of a cookie. Like, it's almost like that outer crispy rim that you get on a good chocolate chip cookie. This is really impressive. I would totally make this again. Wow. Okay. The cakey. I don't know. That's like a 10 out of 10 recipe. That's pretty genius. That's really good. This is really good. Oh my gosh. It does look a little bit weird. Like it did cave in a little bit, but my gosh, that tastes, that tastes really good. Wow. Wow. I'm very impressed by that cakey recipe. I would definitely make it again. That's much better than like a cookie cake. I was also a little bit skeptical when I was adding olive oil to this cake, but I don't think I can taste the olive oil at all. I think it just adds to the moisture of it. I highly recommend this recipe. There's not much more to say. Okay, now let's try the breakies. Sorry, the sun's starting to set, so I have this weird like glow. These are the breakies. They don't really look like the photo I saw in that blog post. They are much flatter. They look much more just like cookies. And in the photo online, the cookies or the breakies were definitely a lot taller. Like they were probably like two or three times this height, but let's give one of these a try. Here's one. It looks just like a chocolate chip cookie, I guess. Like a very soft chocolate chip cookie. Maybe I needed to have the yeast and the milk sit for a little bit longer. And another part of this recipe that I thought was really weird was how the egg was combined with the dry ingredients. Like, I've never seen that before. But let's give it a try. It does taste like a bready cookie. I think because of the yeast. Texture-wise, it's kind of like a cakey cookie. Like, it's very airy and light. But flavor-wise, I can see why it's called a breaky. The yeast, I think, does make it taste a little bit more bready. In most cases, though, I think this would just be classified as a cakey cookie. I guess bread-inspired cookie sounds about right. The breakies are not bad. I would give them maybe like a six or seven out of 10, but the cakey, you should definitely try 10 out of 10. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making these recipes and taste testing them. If you did enjoy watching this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Oh boy.